when I tell you what I'm about to say, I truly mean it. Sometimes you walk out of a movie and you just feel so passionate about it and you believe everything you're about to say. And again, time will tell if this feels definitive. But after walking out of The Wild Robot, I have to say I think this is the best DreamWorks movie yet. Yes, I mean over Shrek. Yes, I mean over Kung Fu Panda. And yes, I mean over How to Train Your Dragon. This film is a masterpiece. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing The Wild Robot. DreamWorks is brand new animated film that takes place after a shipwreck when an intelligent robot called Roz is stranded on an uninhabited island. And to survive the harsh environments, Roz bonds with the island's animals and cares for an orphaned baby goose. Now, that concept is very subtle, very small, and kind of seems a little simple. And in execution, it is a lot more than that, specifically with what is actually going on here and the development cycle between Roz, this baby goose, and even this little fox voiced by Pedro Pascal. But the really meat behind this all is that it's directed and written by Chris Sanders, who did a phenomenal job with How to Train Your Dragon and especially did an amazing job with Lilo and Stitch, my personal favorite Disney animated movie of all time, my personal favorite Disney animated character of all time. I love Stitch, and I love what that film does, specifically with the way that it builds up emotion. And when I knew Chris Sanders was going to be directing and writing The Wild Robot, I knew there had to be something special here. Something that was going to be unlike anything that we've experienced in a while when it comes down to animated movies. And in a lot of ways, The Wild Robot is so unique to itself. And I'm so excited to be talking about this movie today. So please make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe and let me know what your current favorite DreamWorks movie is. If you've gotten the chance to check out The Wild Robot this weekend, then please let me know your thoughts as well. If you are on the cuff, I don't know if I want to see it. I cannot recommend it enough. It is one of the best films of this year. And like I said, it might even be the best DreamWorks movie ever made. So with that said, let's dive into my pros. And the number one thing I do want to talk about and let's get out of the way is the voice performances. Voice performances are great. Lupita Nyong'o does a really good job with Ross. Starts out as pretty, again, simple with Ross being a robot and acting like the robot persona. Imagine Baymax, but a little bit deeper in terms of its thinking, in terms of its thought process, and in terms of certain things that they do with Baymax. And that was one of the things, because I love Baymax so much. He's a cute, adorable robot. But Roz kind of has this depth to them that I was very surprised to see how Lupita Nyong'o was able to bring to life. Because at first, again, simple, it's cute, it's funny, it's whatever. But as Roz starts to develop, you really see the transition of the voice performance. And Nyong'o showcases that performance in such an amazing way. There's a couple emotional parts that really center back to the back of my head that without the vocal performance of Nyong'o and in the way that she portrayed it, it would be almost impossible for the same emotion to come across. And the same thing goes for Pedro Pascal, who does an amazing job as Fink. And I think, again, multiple emotional moments all starts simple, starts a little funny, a little dark humor at times sometimes, but then immediately, or not more immediately, but towards the later half, it shifts into such a beautiful dynamic that adds layers. Same thing goes for Bright Bill, played by Kit Connor, and many of the other characters along the way that they all meet. Voice performances are a dime a dozen, and they can add or take away from an animated movie that you're watching. And the wild robot just felt like something so beautiful and so touching from just those performances. But I do think the two things that stand out the most here, other than those, is everyone's going to talk about the animation. And the animation is very reminiscent of Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but in some ways even more beautiful. There were certain shots that I could have easily paused, framed, and put on my wall. And you've probably heard that a lot. I'm pretty sure I've even said that during Spider-Verse when I've reviewed Spider-Verse because Spider-Verse is a gorgeous and amazing looking film. But The Wild Robot is the same way. It's a different type of style of animation. Again, hearkening more towards Puss in Boots The Last Wish. But it's storybook effort that it has here fits so well. And the thing that I really liked is that Roz, for the most part, feels as a different animation compared to everything else that you're looking at. Roz looks more real looks more futuristic sci-fi ish 
as all the animals, the landscape, everything of that feels storybookish. And there's this unique dynamic to it to where it never takes away from any of the moments and it always just feels so seamless. And a lot of that, those executive choices of how you want to create and craft the vision that you're going to be seeing all comes from Chris Sanders, the director. And of course, everyone that he directed, his ideas, his vision for this. And that's where The Wild Robot really surprised me. I expected the film to look good, but I didn't expect how mature the film was going to be. Kids will laugh. There are kid jokes in here. But just as many original DreamWorks movies did back in the day is it has a lot of dark humor to it, sometimes about death. And I wasn't expecting that. It's not afraid to touch on people, animals, anything dying, and even touch on aspects of how our characters come to life, which in a way is really depressing, especially when you look at it as a whole. But specifically, one of the main themes that they teach about in this is that some things happen for a reason, even if we don't see it in the moment, which is a massive thing that I think needs to be taught to not just kids, but to us as adults. I don't think we look at that enough. And that thematic is only portrayed a little bit heavier through the way that it touches on grief, through the way it teaches on us wanting to feel accepted in the world, to the way that it teaches us trying to look for our place in the world even if we think we're different or the world tells us that we're different and we don't belong. Anyone watching this video, I guarantee has felt that in one way, shape or another. Could be back in school, could be in the community that you live in, could be maybe you do YouTube and you just don't feel loved, or maybe in your current work environment. Their list goes on and on from there from where we feel out of it. And you have all this bottled up and it all feels like it's coming together. And then emotionally, it strikes you that Roz is a mom in this. And you get a development of parenting and what parenting means. And I loved seeing that. It makes you want to hug your mom. It makes you want to hug your dad and tell him that you love him. And if you're someone who is coming into parenting and or someone that maybe is learning about parenting or maybe is going to be a parent soon, those ideas just really clamor on. And I can only imagine will make you emotional throughout this as there's little bits of dialogue that come off funny, but when you deeply think about it, it's all true. And Chris Sanders does an amazing job. The, 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 the script for this is so wonderfully crafted that all these ideas, none of them ever feel left over or in general attack on, added on to just have there. They all feel seamless through the transition through the story. And again, something that started off so simple and so cute becomes so deep. And again, when I look at the entire picture, this doesn't feel like a movie that Disney or DreamWorks or Pixar would make. From the first approach, yes. A robot in the forest bonding with animals? Yeah, that seems like anything that one of those studios would have made. But it heavily reminds me of Studio Ghibli films. And the fact that it not even just feels that in its thematical way, but specifically in its depth and its emotional journey was one of the things that heavily surprised me. And if you were to have told me, oh, this isn't directed by DreamWorks, this is made by like an independent animated studio, or even Studio Ghibli, I would fully believe you. But it is from DreamWorks, and it's something a little bit different. And even though, again, it has that humor that is for kids, and specifically adults, some of the dark jokes in here go there. But again, they all add and all tie back to those thematics. And also, even from there, it touches on ideas of working together. Like, all these little things, like, I don't think people get. And this is, like, where I say is that animation is not just for kids. It's for adults. It's for anyone to enjoy. And all these ideas, while something that you may have seen prior in other animated films or other movies, pri or other movies before that are trying to teach a story, this is a film 
that comes off in an emotional journey that all of it just resonates with you and you feel like you were able to take away so much, especially from our main characters who again are not perfect. Even if like Roz, for instance, was built to be perfect. Reasons and more, I would love to talk about spoilers, but it's up to you to go along for the journey for the ride and come away with something newly learned. And I think a lot of us will come away with other thematics and other thoughts that we came learning from this other than the ones that I just said. And that's why I think The Wild Robot isn't just one of DreamWorks best. It's one of the best animated movies I've ever truly experienced. It might even be the best DreamWorks film ever made. An emotional journey of grief, finding your place in the world, and even what it means to be a parent. One of the few animated films that can capture a landscape of emotions but still be entertaining. It's truly a masterpiece and an absolute work of art. The voice performances are great and I cannot wait to see The Wild Robot again. Right now, it's probably my second favorite film of the year. But it's rivaling Dune. Maybe it'll be my number one. Who knows? But with that said, guys, I'm going to give The Wild Robot an A+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. I cannot wait to hear your guys' thoughts on The Wild Robot. It comes out this weekend. Maybe you've already gone and seen it and you're watching this review after it's already out. Please let me know down below your guys' thoughts. I, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm really speechless. But thank you guys again. And, of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.